At today's press event at the U.N. unleashing on Canada, China, and a slew of others. Watch. Why has President Trump given so much to North Korea? I said, if I wasn't elected, you'd be in a war. And President Obama essentially said the same thing. And he, he was saying that China has total respect for Donald Trump and for Donald Trump's very, very large uh, brain. He said, Donald, Donald Trump, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. Here exclusively is Rick Brunel, the U.S. ambassador to Germany. Ambassador, good to have you back on American soil for a Thanks. little bit. It nice to see really you. It feels really good Thanks to be for, here. Thanks for being here. Um, so one of, you know, part of your job is representing the United States. It is your job in Germany and then in other parts of, of the EU. And the president talked about the relationships that he has with different countries. What do you see when you're out there speaking to other ambassadors and dignitaries about the president? Look, I, I think the facts are speaking for themselves. The, in Germany, for instance, they are seeing that we have 33,000 American troops. We just announced 1,500 more. So they're seeing the action of defense spending. They can deal with some harsh words because they know that they don't have submarines that work. They know that they don't have transport helicopters that work. They have a military that is completely not ready, and they've been reliant on the United States. So when Donald Trump says... Um, you know, you probably should have a military that's ready. They know that that's true, but no one has ever really said that that directly. The, the interesting part is just uh, NATO spending, for instance. That was the policy of President Bush, who I worked for. It was the policy of President Obama. Nothing changed. But when there's a forceful, hey, this isn't a fair relationship. By the way, what I've been saying in Germany is we're not asking Russia and China to increase their military. We're asking our friends. We're asking the people that we want to serve side by side with when there's a crisis. So uh, I'm trying to remind people, too, in Germany that when it comes to defense spending, the American people are spending a lot of money on the 33,000 American men and women, but the American people don't have free health care. They don't have free college tuition like point. what the Germans and the Europeans have. So when I remind them and they get the context, they start to come around. And it's also a pretty tough message to Russia when, when you're building up NATO and you're building up all those forces on the border. It sends a pretty strong signal, even though the president has been accused of being too too soft on them. Now, one of the big focuses that you've had is, is with Iran and with encouraging companies to stop doing business with them. We have a list of companies that we can put up on the board uh, that have all cut their ties with Iran, and you were instrumental in, in working on that. They're not very happy about this, but look, this is a this is a, a, a an issue for me that's very personal. I worked on this issue inside the Security Council for eight years. I've seen the evidence. Iran is is very deceitful. They push gays off buildings. They're a regime that funds terrorism. I would argue that, that Syria and Yemen are in chaos largely because of Iran funding, largely because of Iran's chaos. What I've been making the case to the Germans is to say, all of your migration problem, or at least a large portion of it, you can blame on Iran and the chaos in Syria. So you must stop funding uh, this regime. And, and when we talk to the CEOs and we, we, we say it very clearly, they choose the United States. And by the way, we don't Not tell them. Not that tough a choice, really, when you put it to them that way, is yeah, it? Well, we tell them, look, you get to choose where you want to do business. We're not telling you where with to do Iran business. With Iran or with the United States? But you can't do both. You, you can pick one, but you can't do both, and, and we're watching. And so I present it to them to say, you get to pick. Yeah. Do you think Angela Merkel will, will survive uh, politically? She, uh, you know, it's really hard to say what happens next. There's a lot of maneuvering right now. She just lost a, a major vote yesterday, yeah. uh, the parliamentary vote. Um, it's, that was a big hit. But I think that she's a survivor, and I think that she knows how to adjust. Do you think she respects President Trump? Absolutely. I've been in the in the room, actually, where they've negotiated back and forth. And President Trump respects uh, the chancellor. Mm -hmm. uh, he looks across the table and he sees someone who's got the largest uh, economy in all of Europe. Right. That to President Trump speaks volumes. And I've actually heard him say, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for outmaneuvering us on the surplus. I don't blame you for outmaneuvering us on mm -hmm. tariffs. I, I would have done the same thing if I was representing Germany. Ambassador Grinnell, thank you. Great to see you. Good, Good to, to have you, you back Thanks. in the United States. We'll see you soon.